All right, so we're back on Ascension and I think this is gonna be my final prestige. We're gonna do the one to 60 thing again. This time we got Explosive Shots and Black Arrow as our two regular skill cards. They have really good synergy with each other as Black Arrow is a level 50 hunter talent and then Explosive Shots level 61. And with this talent lock and load, there's a 10% chance whenever Black Arrow does damage. And I think you can actually buff this up the more points you put into it to cause the next two Explosive Shots to trigger no cooldown. So you can Explosive Shot three times in a row basically for big boy burst. Plus Black Arrow also increases all damage done by my hunter abilities to the target by 8% and does shadow damage over time. As for our golden skill cards, I dumped 450 gold on golden skill cards. They're basically 10 gold per golden skill card, so how much is that, like 45? Plus I've already dumped, probably double that as I was doing other prestiges. Yesterday they did make it easier to get rare golden and regular skill cards, so I was getting better drops, but I never really found anything better than Rockbiter, which gives you, I believe, 200 attack power at level 60, which is quite a bit. It was boosting me up to like 800 attack power, so it was like one fourth my attack power coming from justice ability and then molten armor i feel like would be really good in pvp causes 75 fire damage when hits increases your critical strike rating by five percent of your spirit as well and even with only like 50 spirit that's what like i want to say like two and a half crit plus while leveling there's always the chance that our build could take a turn towards a more spirit oriented build and if we're stacking spirit and we get like i don't know 300 spirit eventually with the build five percent of that is like what 15 crit but yeah the 75 fire damage return to whoever attacks us could be really good i'm not sure if we can get molten armor and explosive shot though because they're both level 60 skill cards. I'll get Molten Armor and Explosive Shot both at level 60. That could be a problem. I'm not really sure what's going to happen but I guess we'll find out and yeah we'll start with Concussive Shot for that 10% extra chance to crit whatever we use Concussive Shot on if we talent it and it slows. And Alright so here's the first four abilities I opted to start with. Do note the rarity on these so Concussive Shot is epic. Auto Shot is common and I wasn't sure if I needed this but I do think this is almost a requirement and it might be too much of a gamble to not start with this. Aspect of the Hawk is rare and increase our range attack power, increase our explosive shot damage and there's a chance that we can increase our range attack speed if we put five talent points into it plus hunter's mark increase our attack power even more which is going to increase our explosive shot damage and so yeah the goal here is just to make explosive shot do as much damage as humanly possible so i did the 15 to 60 dungeon grind i think they took away some of the quests so you get less marks because i only had 4k and that was after doing i want to say like three or four quests that were unrelated to dungeons that being said here's the first four abilities we started with i then drafted raptor strike track humanoids serpent sting and arcane shot as hunter abilities and then at 50 i got my skill card black arrow which does have a really long cooldown by the way 30 seconds you can talent it with three talent points to reduce the cooldown by 12 seconds though so you can make it have an 18 second cooldown but it does cost three talent points to do that as far as the abilities i drafted into so these are all common abilities down here and this is pretty much all i got except for we got the legendary travel form and legendary lay on hands i think i want to stick with lay on hands pretty much no matter what because i do a lot of pvp and i think it's really clutch for pvp but as far as travel form it's got a 10 second cooldown but you can put five talent points into improved travel form to make the cooldown zero. Do else keep mine, it costs 544 mana, but with those five talent points, you can reduce it by 40%. And then for three more points in natural shapeshifter, you can reduce it by another 30. So you can reduce it by 70% basically, but that's a lot of talent points. Versus, for example, survival tactics reduce the cooldown of disengage and increases movement speed by 6% for three seconds after using it, and it will clear slow effects on you. So yeah, I think I want to dump travel form and try to get disengage. There's also this legendary already with disengage it launches this higher into the air and activates a combat parachute while airborne you get 25% crits and when you land you get 80% range attack speed for six seconds that's huge and I was talking to someone it feels like the game needs you to have two legendaries so if you don't have two legendaries they're actually really common so if I can reroll lay on hands or travel form which I don't want to reroll lay on hands but if I can reroll travel form I definitely will here oh and also I stopped getting abilities at like 58 I don't know what my 60 abilities are gonna be I hope it's not gonna be two of my skills cards explosive shot and molten armor because they're both level 60 abilities so yeah we're about to find out i have successfully used my skill card golden skill card molten armor it's only got one rare here. Do I even want Molten Armor, by the way? If I get this, there's a lower chance for more rares. Like, Aim Shot is really good. Aside from that, though, there's not really any Hunter rares that I want. Yeah, I think I do want this. Okay, first, let's see how much crit we get with Molten Armor. We have 151 Spear right now. Why? Oh, my primary stat is Intellect. Well, let's see how much range crit we get with Molten Armor. Not much at all. What? Increases your Critical Strike rating by 5% of your Spirit. That's not chance. That's Critical Strike rating. Well, that thing sucks. I mean, 75 Fire Damage is quite a 
lot, I guess. But it's not like I'm just going to be sitting there tanking. Like, this would be good for healer PvP, I guess. Because you're trying to survive a long time, right? Oh, and one thing I also forgot we rolled into was poisons, which apparently is good with Hunter. I think it's really good with the multi-multi-shot build. So I'm going to hope we roll into multi-shot. Then I can go into multi-multi-shot. And with that, you fire like five projectiles instantly. And I'm hoping they all have a chance to poison. Because yeah, in the Fell Forward season, I dumped poisons and everyone was railing on me in the comments for that. But yeah, we're going to hope that we get explosive shot with these hands of fate. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. And we dump, thankfully, no good abilities. Flash blight. No abilities that are core to the build anyways. And so yeah, we're going to go through these hands of fates. I already have the opportunity to reroll Leon Hands. I wonder if I should do it. The thing is, I want Leon Hands. Like, I don't want travel form if I could choose. For now, we'll just keep Leon Hands as I do want it. Like, I would almost choose it over Disengage. So we're down to 23 hands of fate. We've blown through about half of them. And I've gotten the opportunity to reroll Leon Hands three times now, but no opportunities to reroll travel form. And finally, with 20 cards left, we have the ability to reroll travel form. We're going to hope that we get some legendary though after this we got 19 or 20 more skill cards <laughs> there you go three cards later we got ghost wolf i don't want that though we got Ghost Wolf and Sprint two cards later. So yeah, that is the case. Legendaries are not actually rare. If you don't have any, and that's probably the same for other rarities too. Like it wants you to get a certain amount of rares. So you got to kind of really think like, was Molten Armor worth it? Like, do I want to dump that? Or the chance I can get Aim Shot, for example. And yeah, compared to Disengage, like I don't care about Sprint at all. The question now is, do I want to dump Molten Armor? I think I do. You went to 150 Spirits, only give me like 0.5% crit. It's not that good. It's also not going to help me pump out any more DPS, which that's kind of my goal with this build too, is I want to pump the DPS. That was a waste of a skill card. Like hardcore but what can you do we got steady shot that's pretty good for pumping we don't have to dump anything good chain lining easy oh we got multi-shot wow back to back amazing stuff and we can dump insect swarm nice we get a free taunt point magma totem so we got a rare for the first time actually i think out of 29 skill cards we did not get a single rare as far as i remember we end up dumping one of our rares and then two pulls later we get a rare but yeah i don't want magma totem like it could be good to pump aoe but i'm gonna hold out for a better rare oh we got it let's go dude Yes. If I'm being honest, I had no hope they were going to get this because there's actually a lot of legendaries. We got Starfall, Moonkin Form, Berserk, which I don't actually know if you can get that without a form. Tree of Life, Pain Suppression, Guardian Spirits, Dispersion, Hunger for Blood, which I got my last uh, roll, Killing Spree, Blade Storm. Like there's a lot of legendaries at 60. If I want to disengage, I probably should have rerolled earlier. We're just going to hope that we don't have to dump anything good. Yes, tech traps or regrowth are just abilities I do not care about at all. I do already have a heal with healing wave and it heals for about the same as regrowth if you factor in regrowth heal over time, but it has a 0.6 second longer cast. So I'm thinking maybe I still want to keep regrowth and just dump detect traps. Not a lot of people are going to have traps anyways, so it's not that big of a deal, I think. So I've kind of just been messing around all day working on a PBE build and I was able to get up to, I think it was like 2k DPS on target dummies, hitting three of them with this aimed explosive shot already. Oh God, no, 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 no. Wait, this could be good. Do I want to fight this guy? Oh, I don't want to fight someone right away is a thing, but... Oh, no. No! No, dude. Why am I fighting... Why am I seeing two people right away? I need to run, I need to run, I need to run. I don't even care if I get killed. Oh, my God. I think I'm actually going to lose so much right now. Okay, yeah. Please, 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 please. And, 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 and. Yes! Dude, that was so big. Okay. Get off me, freaking stupid bear. Get off me. Dude, I'm not even ready. Like, what? I wasn't expecting to find people. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme out, gimme out, gimme out. 14 seconds, yes. Good lord, dude, I was not ready. I was not ready for it at all. I didn't get any of that guy's Felcom stuff. The guy had nothing Felcomed. Holy crap, that was so stressful. What I was about to talk about is, okay, we didn't actually even have enough money to cover if we would have died there. If we would have lost like our bow, we would have dropped 43 gold plus, I guess we're not Felcoming the weapon, but then everything else is around 17 gold. And I think there's a chance that you can drop three items. Okay, wait, that's definitely not the case. 43 gold, 80 silver, plus I guess 19 gold, 45 silver equals this much. So you can drop two pieces of loot, I guess. So on the off chance that I would have dropped my bow and my cape, I wouldn't have had enough gold to cover that. And I could have dropped this bow, which I really don't want to drop as currently. Well, it's only 58 gold in the auction. So that's not that bad. Earlier it was like 90 gold plus, but yeah, I do apologize for flipping out there. I was not expecting to run into two players. Like that was actually insane. I was not ready. I was about to talk about how I'm going to go kind of practice the build a little bit, do a little bit of farming. Maybe we'll run into someone, maybe not. But the main thing was I needed to farm. I thought it was like a gold, but I guess I only need to farm like one one silver to be able to get up to that coverage amount. 
sense. But yeah, we're playing with a build that I literally just theorycrafted. Like I put all this gear on just now. I put all these Arties on. As far as our legendary Arty, we're running Paratrooper, which was on these Beast Stalker shoulders for like eight gold. It was for the shoulders and the legendary Arty. So that's pretty sick. And as far as what we got from this guy, so he dropped his legendary Arty for, ooh, we just got bank off that 38 gold for that. What I love about killing that guy too is like he wanted it so bad and he's not even doing anything besides just looking for PvP. Like he's not farming. Like ordinarily if I go to Western Plaguelands, I will go farm and then if there's people there, then I'll try to kill them. But what he was doing was just camping by the flight master, which that is pretty scummy, I think. There should be an area around there where it's kind of like a safe zone, but no, right when you get off the flight master, you have to be ready for PvP. Oh, and get wrecked. He lost another 30 gold off of this RE. I don't know why he didn't felcom this stuff because yeah, that's 30 gold right there. Rapid burn, I guess, is really good. Increase the damage of your scorch against targets afflicted by your ignite. But yeah, so as for my stats, I have all PvP power gear. I blood forge everything. Anything that was not blood forged, I just used a bloody jar on it, which you can buy from, I think it's Nazdormu. Yeah, here's Nazdormu. You can get the bloody jar from him on the second page for 25 silver pop. And yeah, as for the Ari, since we're going single target PvP, I'm using controlled explosion. Increase the damage of explosive shot by 12% on the main target, but reduce its AoE effect. Focus burst plus multi multi shot. So multi shot does quite a bit of extra damage. And then as for my third epic Ari, you can have three epics now. Kindle for the fire, dealing non periodic damage with your physical abilities. And that pretty much only applies to multi shot and steady shot. But if I use multi shot once, since it fires five projectiles, it will instantly stack this up to 10% and that increases my fire damage, which I believe increases explosive shot damage. Now I'm not sure on that. I don't really know how to test that exactly, but one would think since you're increasing fire damage, explosive shot does do fire damage. They should be working together. Oh, and also I almost have 6 HP. So I changed out a lot of my gear for stuff that has stam. Like anything that I'm using, except for this ring actually is not of stam. But if I toss this out for a ring with more stam, I could easily get to 6k. And I was talking in a previous video how I have no idea how the guy has 6 HP. That's how he's got it. And this pole arm also gives no stam. But yeah, I... Okay. Uh, good lord. This guy's not messing around. Okay, death coil. I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how he's doing so much damage. I'm not hurting him, like... I'm just not hurting him. I'm not doing damage to him. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, okay. There's just people camping around towns, I guess. I don't know. Like, he got the opener on me. And even if I didn't get opened on, I didn't have much time to do anything. Like, I need more survivabilities. Well, already then, I lost 34 gold. At least I didn't lose my weapon. Still have 28 gold left. The main thing I care about is the RE. Like, I don't care about the gloves themselves. They're worth, like, 5 gold. That plus 6 mystic orbs it would cost for this TNT enchant probably would be worth more than 17 gold, though. But yeah, the other item that was kept safe was this Sash of the Grand Hunt. Again, it was, like, 5 gold, but it's a blue RE. But yeah, this is brutal. It's like, these people aren't even trying to farm or do anything productive they're just trying to prevent other players from doing anything productive like i'm trying to go out there and farm they're not camping farming areas though that's what's like a little bit disturbing they're camping the roads to get to farming areas i guess i got to keep my wits more about me when i'm literally leaving the town like I, I feel like i got ambushed like right here like as i was leaving well okay i actually made it further than i thought where we're at the safe zone is right here and then i made it all the way over here so i think the guy just kind of trailed me from the safe zone but yeah this is freaking brutal i think i'm just gonna resurrect in a safe zone and close this town and yeah, right now I can't really go out because I don't have enough gold to cover my maximum gold loss on death, assuming I were to lose the bow plus something else. I would lose my bow and I'm not trying to lose my bow. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have dumped 450 gold on and golden skill cards because I don't even think I got anything good, did I? Yeah, I got like molten shield, which I didn't even use. So the next morning I woke up to a nice surprise in my mailbox, a few things sold, and unfortunately my mic ended up messing up. Plus 1450 for some devout bracers and got a bunch more stuff that sold. That's my real voice before it goes through the filter that I forgot to turn on. But yeah, so some of this footage got kind of ruined. I was dueling this guy who had a really tanky build. I feel like I had to play it pretty much perfectly to beat him. Anytime he would charge me, I would have to disengage away. And there was one time I kind of wasn't thinking and I just disengaged and he ended up just ripping me a new one. Thankfully later I was able to come back and I caught him fighting some mobs so that helped. Plus I also think I was better with my disengages this time and do keep in mind this guy's pretty try hard like he has the 18 stam, 18 strength elixir plus a food buff and there's a variety of them one of which I'll go over later. Since my mic is still corrupted and this is a pretty long fight I'll put a timestamp to when it ends in the corner and I'll play a song a friend of mine freestyled on their keyboard which I was really impressed by.
point is we just see the foe. So one of the weeklies is to kill the Darnassus world boss, and yeah, we're in the Darnassus chamber killing Tyrandi Whisperwind. Doing this quest is going to give 2250 marks of ascension, plus I have almost 2300 marks. We might be able to do four of the card turn ins, which would be awesome. That'd be 12 more abilities, I think. Plus, there's also a really easy daily I can do for 100 marks. And the cool thing about that is the game wants us to get another epic and another rare. There's a pretty good chance we'll get some of both in our next card, so yeah. And as far as the loot, we get a Spoils of War. And in that Spoils of War, we get one gold, some blood mail boots, and a sword. And yeah, top four DPS, Lightning Bolt, Order Shock, Chain Lightning Build. It's just so broken. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand why if you just roll Lightning Bolt or Shock Chain Lightning Build, you automatically top the meters in every dungeon and raid. And yeah, I was pulling 1k damage, which is really pathetic. I was using PvP gear and PvP spec, though. I didn't even care to put on my PvE gear, which would have probably boosted my damage by a good, like, 300 DPS. So I got nine hands of fate, and yeah, they're getting a really expensive now. It's 1250 marks of ascension for just three. They start at what was, like, 500 marks. I need 150 more marks for the next three hands of fates. And yeah, we're gonna open nine right now. We're just gonna hope we get an epic or ooh, summon fell hunter the problem with going for fell hunter is not only is it epic so there's no chance i get freezing trap or frost trap which i really want either of those i also lose six percent damage if i have a tame beast or summon demon active fell hunter can dispel enemy buffs though and it does damage it's probably really nice to have as a thing the more i think about it summon fell hunter would not help me be melees and melees are the main thing i have problems with i'm gonna hold out for either summon void walker or an epic ability that it helps me get some survivability oh there we go with three hands of fate left i got blessing of kings it's a really good buff, don't get me wrong, but it'd be lowering the chance that I get aim shots. Plus, like, counterattack actually be pretty good for melee. Immobilizes the target for five seconds. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. So yeah, those nine skill cards were kind of a waste. I still need 150 marks for another one. We're about to go. There is a way to farm some marks. Before we do that, I have done some modifications to my gear. As you can see, I have 6.7k health. I'm just stacking stam at this point. My old weapon gave 35 agi, but no stam. This one gives 30 stam plus attack power. I did also fell comet. It costs 25 gold if I drop it. Another pretty big modification I did was I bought the honor shoulder. They give 20 stam, a bunch more PvP power, and it looks like the honor gear actually gives more PvP power than the non-honor gear, which normally anything that's around level 60 will give the same amount of PvP power, but not honor gear, I guess. You also get pretty nice bonuses for getting the sets for honor gear, so I'm gonna try to do that. You get a lot of honor for doing the honor daily, like win a worse on Golitzer match. You get 10k honor for doing that, and for 20k, you can actually get the shoulder enchant for 15 stam, 8 resil. So that's giving us more stam, plus I got like this necklace for pretty cheap. It was like 20 gold. It costs 20 gold if I drop it, but... This is the ZG necklace and it gives 15 Agi, which my old one just gave 15 Agi, but it also gives a good amount of stam and some ints. Oh, and then these Sergeant's Leather Arm Guards give quite a bit of stam and more PvP power than my old bracers. And these are really cheap from the Honor Bender. They were like, I want to say like 3k Honor. I think they're like best in the slot though for PvP wrist guards. Oh, and I got this trinket for a steal. It gives 28 crit, which is like 2% crit, I think. Yeah, it's 2% crits. And I freaking yoinked this off the auction house for like 20 gold. Right now, I guess it's only 65, but when I yoinked it, the dude put it up for 20 and there was like five of them in the auction house for 80. Speaking of yoink, I yoinked this dwarven hand cannon for like eight gold, resold it for 34. It's going for like 20 to 30 right now in the auction house. So I got a pretty good deal for that. And then I sold my old necklace for 18 somehow. Oh, it's because the Ari and same with my ring. I sold the Ari, which must have been like master tactician increased the chance to trigger it by 2% and basically just gives me 1% extra crit because it's always up. And speaking of Ari's, I guess I sold this one for 42. I don't remember what this one was though. If I had to guess, it must have been legendary. It could have been a really good epic one though it just kind of depends like when you're doing the random enchanting on altars on insignias some of those can end up being worth a lot of money see we're back up to 188 gold and my maximum gold loss on death is still only 69 gold this trinket does cost a bit more than the other trinket i was using same with this one i decided to splurge for an insignia of the horde which costs 18 gold but this is a pvp trinket that's only on a two minute cooldown plus it gives a little bit of resil and pvp power so i didn't think that was definitely worth these shoulders cost a bit more too than like the beast stalker ones i was using 19 gold potentially and then my two hander is 25 the bows 43 also before we do go out you can buy these void touch stews for like nine gold gives 25 stam for an hour and even persists if you die so that's going to boost us over 7k health yeah we're at 7k almost exactly pop this elixir of the mongoose when i enter battle i can kind of wait on this because it's an instant pop whereas the food you have to sit still and eat it for a while we're now going to head over to the i guess you'd call it a contested flight path there could be people camping it but yeah i think we're ready to fight i do have four talent points ready to spend which i did not realize here's my spec that i'm going for i did not put a whole lot into the 
the marksman tree this time and also i'm missing out on like tnt which maybe i should put three points into that 10 percent more damage on black arrow yeah let's do that or nine percent oh and then i decided not to go for improved aspect of the hawk i just feel like the increased range attack speed is just not that good maybe increase attack power bonus of it though because it gives 96 with one point of that it gives 124 i think that's worth i think that actually might even be worth more so than three points into tnt let's put two points into tnt and then one more point to aspect mastery so now it gives 153 attack power it's quite a bit yeah we're kind of in the world so i do need to focus here but one last thing i want to talk about is weapon modifications so i put a scope on this weapon for like 17 gold i think it was oh there's a dead body over here i'm kind of looking at the map right now too while i'm doing this but i put a scope on this weapon and then there's also really good weapon enchants you can get that i believe are unique to ascension and i was thinking about getting one for this two-hander but i just don't know if it's something that i'm gonna want long term it gives a lot of stam though and that's like my strat right now is stacking stam i'm missing out on damage but i feel like with this much stam it's gonna make my lay on hands heal a lot too because it heals for a percentage of my health but speaking of percentage of health there's one more talent that i want to talk about it looks like somebody has been a busy little bee over here though there's a dead mob which they did a really good job of making these unique spawn after you kill i want to say like 10 elites then one of these uniques will spawn or rares rather oh here we go pvp oh it's this guy he was talking trash the other day i'm actually going to show a clip i'll look in my uh, whatchamacallit for the clip of this guy talking trash he's just a trash talker though and uh I don't know if he realizes, but it just makes it more satisfying to kill him. He's going to try to die to the mobs. He's a pro at this. He's a professional mob dyer, too. If I uh, said that right. But yeah, he's going to he's gonna try to die to mobs. I'm going to concussive sl shot slow him. And then I'm going to try to get the killing blow on him, but I don't know. I'm also not going to do AoE, so I don't aggro the mobs. I'm pretty sure I even showed a clip of me fighting this guy previously. Multi multi shots. I really need a way to drain mana, people. That'd be nice. Hopefully, this guy's freaking farmed. Oh, he's going for the. Oh, you think you're clever, dude? All you're doing, my friend, is making it easier for me to. Uh... I'm telling you guys, this guy's pro at. This guy's pro at not losing stuff. Unfortunately for him. I have disengage as well. If I didn't have disengage there, he lives. I like his escape path there. Like, despite him being the biggest trash talker in the world. I gotta give props where it's due. Here we go. Oh no, it's not him. So I skimmed through quite a bit of footage to find this time where he was talking literal trash. He did get lucky and the mob finished him off so he didn't drop anything, unfortunately. He must have died to the mob. Garlet, Aladdin's holy strike hits him for 187 overkill. No, he's still mad. Why are you still mad? But yeah, here's his gear. Griffin wing longbow. Agi and stam on a caster. Interesting. Dude must be poor. Cyclopean band. Caster ring could be worth something. Increase your shadow damage, but he's using holy nova and then arcane synergy that could sell for something i don't know if it's worth dipping out and going back home right now to sell i think i'll just kind of sit around and farm a little bit but yeah, i'm surprised i got nothing to say this time like the last few times i encountered him he did end up not dropping anything for me like he died to mobs so he was more confident in his trash talking but right there you know i guess there's really nothing he can say and yeah over here i think it was where i was able to kill some mobs and then the beast master thing spawned but yeah, i do think it's cool that these mobs now drop the unique stuff like the scarlet flesh the frayed profane cloth i'm not really sure what profession can turn that stuff into the daily where you can turn it in for marks but i feel like if you have the profession here we go restless dead rise and vengeance i feel like if you have the profession though that uses whatever material you should be able to just turn it in as a repeatable quest and it shouldn't be a daily because right now at least how i feel maybe the way i feel this way is because my iq is too low or something i don't ever know what to do with this stuff like i check the auction house and sometimes it sells for like one gold sometimes it'll sell for like 10 i guess it just depends on what the daily is but i feel like if the quest is just just repeatable and you didn't have to turn it in on a specific day i feel like it'd motivate people more to go out in the world and grind because right now it doesn't seem like you get enough reward for risking your gear you know it only seems worth it if you end up getting a 1v1 kill which like that can happen but what if your build's not good enough to get 1v1 kills it just so happens that i'm running a full pvp build and i got like disengaged for example if i didn't have that stuff though and i was only winning like 50 percent of my duels which i mean maybe that's actually what i'm winning right now if you're only winning like half your duels though it doesn't seem like it'd be worth got a wand increase the spell power that could be worth something some essence some anime meat and 100 marks of ascension these will sell for 10 gold in the auction house but yeah i do think the high risk only loot is a good idea oh and like we got these desecrated righteous orbs which yeah these can sell for like five i think but i feel like last time i saw them in the auction house they were like one. Oh, this guy's back 
What? Why? Try to not let him die to the uh, zombies. They do a lot of damage though, so there's a really good chance that he dies to them. He popped his divine shield, which is interesting. If he runs, that's not smart, in my opinion. Okay, he's just trying to LOS me. Yeah, I like the way he's doing this. Oh, I didn't get the last hit, I'm almost certain. I get the killing blow though. I think um, I get the loot. No, he gets the loot. Crap. I just helped him there. But yeah, I'm just gonna sit around and farm here until another rare spawns, and then I'm gonna get another 100 marks, and then I'm gonna dip out. But that's why he's taking all my mana. Like, if I get ganked, I'm freaking running or dead. But yeah, as far as loot, we got these Deathbone Gauntlets, which could actually be good to sell because they have defense. Twisted Essence Bone Death, Anime Meat, Tender Anime Meat. I don't know if the Epic one's gonna sell. And then Mark of War is the main thing. So the plan here is we're gonna activate that Mark of War. We got the 1250 marks, which is getting insane, by the way. They made it so it costs more marks each time you turn in the quest to make it so there's more replayability value, I guess. And eventually you're gonna wanna press Siege if you don't get the abilities you want, and then they make money off that. If you think about it, that's where Ascension's making all their money. Like it costs 10 DP, which is right now $5, because it was double DP weekend. Last weekend it was triple DP weekend, so it was $3.33. But yeah, you're gonna need that aura, or someone in your party is gonna need that aura, so you can group up with people to do that. And also if you buy XP pots while leveling, you buy like two or three, that's where they're making all their money. Like they're not making money off of you playing at 60 and doing stuff at 60 which eventually if you play enough at 60 you're gonna want to do other stuff like maybe buy the transmog stuff or buy like the skins or maybe even buy like the loot bot that's like a pretty big one actually it's kind of pay to win where the loot bot will loot stuff for you especially if you're doing any aoe grinding like i was actually thinking about aoe grinding this mob over here i should actually do this quest it gives you a nice trinket that uh people might buy i'm not sure but yeah if i want to kill all these mobs which i don't have any aoe besides explosive shots i'd have to sit there and loot them if i don't have holy crap dude these mobs are hurting oh they're elites the skeletal warlords are elite yeah i don't want to be around here right now it's low hp i think low hp low mana yeah, i'll just die to mobs screw it as you can see my aoe farming ability is not great better die to mobs though than a random player comes up and owns me i dropped like the max amount of gold and then i dropped some stuff in my bags like no thanks but yeah say i had a good aoe build and i was able to aoe down all those mobs easily i would have to sit there and individually loot each one of them but with loot bot it just instantly loots all of them for you people would be like oh dude that's not pay to win it paid for convenience i mean time is is winning and i think that's the concept that people don't understand like when it's pay too fast that's pay to win because in wow time is everything which i mean to be fair that's the same concept in life but it's a whole other topic of discussion but yes yeah, so we made it out i'll just check the auction house for like yeah see like this stuff selling for 80 silver it's not the daily day for that stuff i guess three silver for this stuff what that's create orb 14 silver like dude make this stuff a repeatable turning quest please huff anime meat selling for three gold at least string of scarlet flesh 46 silver like come on bro there's no one far farming out there because it's not worth it. We can get three more hands of fate though, and I'm just gonna roll those really fast before I log off. Number one, we got flame tongue weapon. It's for casters more so than anything. It gives a lot more spell power than this when you rank it up, but yeah, definitely not something that we want with this build at least. Wind shear. It's a 20 yard range interrupt. It's pretty good. I don't have a problem with casters though from what I've seen. It's mainly just the melees I need to peel off myself. So yeah, we're gonna pass on that. And last hand of fates, nothing. So yeah, as you can see, we are getting rares and epics. It's just gonna take a long time to get the right one as a thing. And yeah, it's starting to take a long time. Like 1300 marks now is two regular dailies. Well, okay, not these. These give a thousand marks, but these are really hard to do. Like this one is gonna cost you like 200 gold, I think plus. But yeah, now in order to reroll two abilities, I have to do two of these basic dailies. And that's not gonna be enough. Like it's actually kind of insane how much time it's gonna start taking to try to get some abilities I need. Oh, is that Kaja, the guns and ammo vendor who's now 60? But yeah, so as I was editing, I was kind of thinking it over. I think this is gonna be my last Ascension video for this season. This season, it feels like it's really costly to learn. Like if your build's just not working and you wanna try a new one, you have to prestige, which is gonna cost you money basically, unless you wanna prestige really slowly. If you wanna do any PVE DPS, just roll chain lightning, lightning bolt build and you're good. I feel like they really messed up with PVE this season more so than others even. Like it just doesn't make sense why my build was not pumping damage and I was getting like tripled in damage by the lightning bolt chain lightning builds when I had better gear than them. Like it really did not make sense and I was thinking like okay maybe I could reroll change some things out and see how that does but I'd have to prestige again or completely lose this spec and I thought the spec was pretty good for PvP like it could be a little bit better but I wanted to see maybe if I did some more dailies I could get a trap but it was just getting too painful to do dailies because hands of fate started costing 1300 mark. It's like it's almost quicker just to prestige. That's what they want you to do. They want you to prestige so you can pay more money. I started to feel more so this season than any other season like a pay pig like i'm on dsp stream and it's like donate for recognition you know donate so your build can be good type of deal i feel like this season was definitely the worst defender for that out of any season i've played so far which was unfortunate because in some ways this was the best season i just feel like something should have been done a bit differently